So I'm going to work a couple of example problems, uh, not uh, thoroughly, but I want to set you up in the right direction and give you some guidance on how to solve problems in general. But these are real similar to the, uh, the lecture right before spring break, so if you have a good feel for that, uh, you probably don't need to watch this anymore, but, but I'll try to make it as quick as I can. But the first problem I went over was a light bulb problem in which the, uh, there's, um, well, the light bulb's shining first off, so, uh, so the light bulb's shining. And the reason it's shining is because there's some electrical current uh, flowing through the filament, so there's some energy being generated. So E dot gen, what you want to figure out is what E gen is equal to. And you know you're provided in this problem uh, a surface temperature, Ts is, is no, known. So let's say, for example, you've got a thermometer, you're able to measure the, the, the surface temperature of it, and you can also measure T infinity. T infinity is also some known value. And based on your measurements of T infinity and T surface, can you figure out what E gen is equal to or how much power this light bulb is consuming? So E gen might be equal to something like 100 watts, for example, uh, whatever the, the bulb is consuming. So there's a, a number of steps. Let me take you through it. The first step for uh, problem solving in general is to draw your control volume. And I don't think I emphasize this enough, so I'm going to highlight it. And what I mean by this is some area that we can apply, so some known volume that you can apply your energy balance equation to. So in this case, I'm looking at it and I'm saying, well, there's probably some convective flux leaving the light bulb, and there's definitely energy being generated within it. And I look at the problem and I say, well, if I'm able to figure out the convective flux leaving it, I, I can relate that because, it's a, let's say it's a steady state problem. My control volume, in this case, could well just be the surface of the light bulb. So the second step is to write the general energy balance equation. So you, like you've seen before, the energy being stored is equal to the ent energy entering the control volume. So the light bulb in this case, we set up the control volume as these dashed lines, minus the energy leaving it plus uh, any energy being generated within the control volume. So in this case, the E gen is what we're looking to find. So after writing out the general energy balance equation, we'll cross off the, the zero terms for step three. So in this case, it's a steady state problem. The rate of energy being stored is equal to zero. There's no energy coming in. There's no way for thermal energy to enter the system. We've got, we do have some electrical energy crossing the walls, so there is some thermal energy being generated within there. But there is no thermal energy coming into this system. So E stored, E in are uh, equal to zero. And so what you're left with is E gen, which we want to find, is equal to E out, E leaving the system by by convection. So step four is to draw arrows uh, to that uh, summarize the total rates, the total or the all all the different forms that energy can enter and leave the system. So for this problem, I could say energy is being generated by these coils. Drawing the arrows just helps me keep everything straight. So we've got E gen uh, within the light bulb itself. So we could just say so I could put it up here if I wanted to, and then E out in this case is leaving course leaving by convection the hot light bulb into a cold surrounding. So I've got some arrows for it and then the fifth step I would say is to replace the terms with the appropriate heat transfer uh, equations. So in this case E out is equal to the average heat transfer coefficient times the area of the light bulb times the surface temperature minus T infinity. And be real careful with this to get your signs right. So in this case I've set it up so that E out I would, we would expect to be a positive value if energy was leaving it, of course. And the only way to make this a positive value would be if Ts is greater than T infinity. So I always put within the parentheses I always try to make it a positive value and then set up the sign um, on the outside of it if I needed to define it differently. But in this case Ts is greater than T infinity, we kind of know that. And uh, so I don't need a negative sign in front of it. So then step six is once you know these terms, we need to figure out what h bar is equal to. So step six would be um, step six would be to find an appropriate um, correlation for h bar using or find an appropriate correlation for the Nissel number. To find these, check out. I think you've all done it, but I would definitely bookmark tables seven, seven, eight, four, and nine, two to get the right correlations for these. So in this case, we're talking about natural uh, we're natural convection from a sphere. I forgot to mention. Uh, U infinity is equal to zero, so it's a quiescent fluid. It's just the air is still away from the light bulb. So the correlation that I'd want to use is uh, equation 935. It gives me the Nussel number now as a function, uh, the Nussel number as a function of the Rayleigh number, which we can calculate. So a function of both the Rayleigh number and the Prandtl number, 
and hopefully you're real comfortable with calculating both of these. So calculate the initial number, equation 935. Check out, um, you could find it, uh, you could find this particular correlation, table 9.2, for example. It'll refer you to the right direction. So it needs the Rayleigh number based on the diameter. And remember, this subscript D means that the length scale is referring to the diameter of the light bulb. And one other parameter you need, the Prandtl number. So the Prandtl number for air is about equal to 0 0.7. So you could look that up for air. Or you could, uh, in an exam, I would provide it for you. So we know the Prandtl number. Uh, calculate beta. Again, beta for an ideal gas is equal to 1 over the film temperature, which is equal to the average of the, the surface temperature in T infinity. So you've got either uh, 2 over Ts plus T infinity or 1 over 1 half. Ts plus T infinity. And you know what? I have neglected radiation in this. I'm going to say, after step one, draw your control volume. Step two, I'm going to say, instead of writing the general energy balance equation, identify the uh, appropriate heat transfer mechanisms. So let's just say, instead of one E out, let's say there's a, a few of them. So the first one I touched on, uh, convection. And let's say there's also radiation is significant. So E out is a combination of both of these forms. So we've got energy leaving by convection, energy leaving by radiation. And let's also say, well, heck, let's say there's also E in, in this case. We could also say that there's some energy entering the sphere by irradiation. So if we neglected it, then there would be, if there was no irradiation, if there was no G in this case, E in would be equal to zero. But let's just say, for the sake of argument, there is some. So I can say that E in the only form for En, right now I'm uh, writing the energy balance equation, or writing the term En, and that'll equal G absorbed. So there's some fraction of the total irradiation, and we just say that that is equal to alpha G. So I'm going to get rid of all this stuff for uh, natural convection, and I'm going to write an energy balance equation dealing with all these different forms. So here's my revised energy balance equation. We're at steady state, so all the energy uh, being generated is equal, or the energy leaving the light bulb is going to be equal to the energy being generated plus the energy coming into it. So I've got summations here for all those different ways. So I just wrote the general energy balance equation, crossed off all terms that are equal to zero. Uh, I've already drawn the arrows, generation coming in, uh, or uh, irradiation coming in, radiation leaving, convection leaving, and energy being generated. So draw the arrow, step five. Step six, now let's, I'm going to replace all the terms with appropriate heat transfer equations. So here they are. We've got E-gen we can solve for uh, at this point. So we've got ir uh, irradiation. You know alpha in a problem. You, you typically know it for material. G, it might be given to you, or uh, G might be expressed as expressed as sigma uh, times the temperature of the surroundings to the fourth power. And it's important to remember this is not, the, this is not equal to T infinity. It could be equal to the temperature of the walls in the house, for example, that are radiating energy back into the light bulb. But so G, we know G. If you knew temperature of the surroundings, a lot of times you're just given uh, given it to you in the problem. You know H bar based on convection. A, the surface area of the sphere. You know the diameter or whatever. T S, T infinity are both known, and these two properties, T S is known as well. So what you can calculate, you know everything now, and you can calculate, come up with a value for each gen. So this is a quick summary of what I think are the most important uh, points of problem solving, um, the problem solving methodology. So uh, yeah, so again, step two, I would say, definitely say identify the appropriate heat transfer mechanisms after drawing your control volume.